Hello once again everyone. So a bit of a different one for you. Um, as you may have seen from the cutting footage that I put up on the channel, we recently had a Toyama Ryu workshop, which I have been looking forward to for a very long time. And so quite a few of our guys got exposed to that system. And one of the big things that we covered was the five draws. This is not meant to be like an in-depth explanation. This is just meant to be basically a refresher in case you had, in case you went through the class and can't remember all five of them or alternatively in case you're curious and then you can study it more. But uh, for this, I just have a boken in a nice little sheath here. There is more fanciness to it. So after you draw, you can go through certain movements and then get back. I'm just going to cover the draws themselves and then nothing beyond that. So, of course, blade up at my side. Our first draw is going to go ahead and we're going to rotate the sword. So I'm taking my edge, turning it out to the side. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I am going to sink, draw the sword out. Once it's clear, cut with a step forward. Now important thing here is that you do not want to be putting pressure out that way. You can cut through a scabbard without that much difficulty because it's just lacquered wood. So if I do that with pressure on my hand, I'm probably going to lose a decent amount of my hand. These things are no kidding razor blades. And I didn't really appreciate that until I got to cut with them not too long ago. So, when you're practicing this, make sure that there's no pressure going out that way. You should just focus on extending, then you cut. But here's that again. So blade up, sink, draw, cut. And this is just a nice nipping cut. It can be at the arm, it could be at the leg, it could be at a bunch of different things. Now, from there, we'll go ahead and go over sheathing the sword. So what you're going to do is you're going to, you can go through your salute and all that stuff. But from here, we'll just go ahead and shiburi, right? Extend it out to the side. I'm going to then lay the spine on my hand. So I'm doing this basically. I'm going to place the spine against it, draw it down and across until I only have pressure on one side, dip in, sheathe it, and then you're done. Now, some people put a lot of emphasis on that. Um, you don't necessarily have to, that's not required, but you do want to make sure that it is mechanical because if you're ever doing it with a sharp, it is quite intimidating. Um, it's not that hard to cut yourself. But either way, here's that one more time. So I'm here, rotate, draw, cut, shiburi. Oh, see, I mucked it up, that's why you practice. Down, through, no problem. The next one is going to be a cover. So what's gonna happen here is the idea is the cut is coming down from this side and we are going to draw out and pretty much just straight upward and I'm going to catch this. Now a really important thing here to make sure that I didn't appreciate, again, until I got to work with tennis, is keeping your wrist straight so that way I can properly receive this incoming blow. It is a two-handed blow going at your head. You need to make sure you can actually protect yourself. Once again, same thing applies as I just discussed wherein I do not want any pressure going up. If I try to draw like that, I'm going to give myself more problems and then I'm going to die. So, just pretty much from here, straight out, focus on getting that wrist nice and straight, and make sure it's also ahead of you. If it's straight above, you're not in a good place. Out ahead of you. So, here is that with more completion. So, walking around, nothing difficult. Time to draw. Parry. You can then follow through with a cut if you wish. Chiburi. And then sheath. No problem. Our third draw is going to now be, we're going to do a bit of a complicated motion. So this is going to end in a kiriyagi, a cut from below, right? So what's gonna happen is to get this clear, I am going to really crank the sword over. So now my long edge, well, my only edge, is facing downward. So from here, I'm going to crank and I'm also going to sink my weight down. Pretty much just let the sword fall out of the scabbard and as soon as it's clear, you just cut up. So here's that one more time. Blade up, sink, clear, cut. Shiburi, sheath the weapon, no problem. That's the third draw. And this again is meant to be a relatively nipping cut. So someone is going to cut me, fill that gap. You can fill it with a step out to the side. There's a bunch of different applications for this. Our fourth draw is going to be honestly probably the simplest and one of my favorites. We're in now, I'm going to once again draw with the blade up, but I'm going to immediately move into a cut while I step forward with my left foot. 
So this idea is meant to be someone is coming in with either a thrust or a cut or something along those lines. I'm moving out of the way and I'm going to cut onto their lead hand. You could also use this in theory to beat a blade down. But here's that one. So I grab, I'm going to draw, cut, and stepping out to the left side basically. Shiburi. No problem. Here's that one more time. I'll go ahead and do it from the side. Nothing too difficult there. Now our fifth draw is probably the strangest one, wherein now the idea is meant to be that I am fighting against someone in very, very close range, so I don't have room to put my sword forward. So what's going to happen, and this one will feel a lot more apparent if you are using a belt um, to restrain your weapon, is you are going to pass backward, which allows you to turn your hips. So from here, if I'm standing square, I step backward, which now allows my weapon to be parallel uh, with me. And I'm going to turn my wrist once again, draw out, lock it to the body, thrust. So for that, I've just drawn out, lock it to you, thrust, and then you'll follow through with cuts, but we'll just clear. No problem. So I'll show that from the side. And this one is one that you're supposed to be able to do even like up against a wall. So if you want to practice that, it, I have done it, it's quite a bit of fun. But I'm here, there's my opponent, step back, draw, lock, thrust, boom. And that's going to be the five draws. So they're nothing too complicated. You don't require a sheath to do these. You can do it just in your hand, making the uh, shape of your sheath. You can do it into your belt. You can do a bunch of different things. Personally, uh, when I train them, I don't even have, uh, I mean, I will occasionally put them in a belt, but I just use my hand and I get the exact same thing. The biggest thing about them is then you can add all the pomp and ceremony and stuff afterwards, of which usually what it boils down to, and I'll go ahead and set my, set my um, sheath down. Basically, following your initial cut, you're going to just bring it over, cut down, ski, and then you can salute. But really, the biggest thing about it is following your action, you move into the chiburi, then you sheath. But all that is to say, just a nice little reminder for everybody who went to the workshop and all that fun stuff. Um, can you do this with a Western sword? Yes, these will generally still work, but they will require a little bit of adaptation, especially given the length of your weapon. So remember what their purpose is. These are five draws. They can, in theory, work with any sword. They have a certain purpose to them. The first nicks, uh, the second one covers, the third intercepts, the fourth clears, and then the fifth is for super close range. So, employ those. Maybe you'll get the chance to use them. Hopefully not, but maybe you do. Um, and thank you very much for watching. We'll go over some other techniques another time.